Podcast. I'm Louie, and as always, I'm joined by my bud, Dave. Hello, everybody. And we're joined for the third time by a special guest. You're the first person for the that, that's been a guest on the show three times. Adam. Whoa, whoa. From the Great feel, Pumpkin Project. I feel, I feel very, <laughs> very, very privileged. Thank you. Um, it's good to... Um, mess you guys up with uh, technical stuff for three years in a row, but you're still having me back. <laughs> hey, man. We it's, welcome it's it. how it is. Yeah, we, we welcome the, te- the technical welcome difficulties. It. That's, that's, uh, <laughs> what's a, what's a podcast without a technical difficulties? I guess that, I suppose that that's pretty true. That's yeah, especially when you have guests on, especially when there's like a guest that doesn't yeah. do this all the time, you know, you're not a seasoned is- pro like Dave and I kind of, <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I don't believe you for a second, but I'll take it. <laughs> okay. um, but just in case now, and, and I think I've done this twice in a row because, and I'm, I'm shaming our listeners, which is not good. But if you have not listened to the previous two episodes Adam was on, let our listeners know what exactly is the Great Pumpkin Project. All right. Well, uh, the Great Pumpkin Project has been something that I've been doing for will be year number eight now. Uh, the Ooh. purpose of it, yeah, love it. So, a lot of <laughs> lot of garbage bags filled with pumpkin seeds and a lot of miles and burnt gas for sure. Um, <laughs> so, Great Pumpkin Project is a project going eight years now. Um, the idea is to leave carved jack o' lanterns in different random parts. Uh, around towns, um, creepy houses, on train bridges, on anywhere that looks like it could use some Halloween spirit. And hopefully somebody passes by it, goes, what the hell is that? And it's like, you know, I get it. I appreciate the random random Halloweenness of it. And in addition to just leaving those out, it's one for every night of October. Uh, Each pumpkin has a tag on it saying Great Pumpkin Project and a clever little saying on the back. Each year, we get a different artist to design the tag designs. A lot of pretty well-known Halloween people have been involved in it, I'm proud to say. And uh, yeah, just trucking along. And um, happy to be here. I'm glad somebody's still interested in doing it. I have a question for you, Adam. I have an answer. Who's doing this year's tag it is up it's still up in the air i'm um in talks between like two people i tried with one person but way too booked up i usually will i usually like to have the art and the uh the tags themselves in hand by like mid-september and it's not going to happen um Mm. so we'll see we um weigh my options we'll see how it comes i'm actually kind of looking at possibly going the route of going through somebody I know directly so I can kind of nitpick a little more, get a little bit more like, well, what about this? What about this? You know, kind of fine tune the design. Sure. You don't want to, you don't want to go and be extra picky to, you know, somebody <laughs> who's an established okay. artist well, with other more important things to draw and paint about like, well, why can't you do this color? Why can't you put this there? So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Adam, I can always hear you describe what the Great Pumpkin Project is. It's always it's it, it warms my heart just hear you describe Absolutely. what it is. Absolutely, I, I always I'm know. What, I'm glad it has that effect. I always know what you're gonna say too. I'm like, oh, I know exactly what he's gonna oh, say. So it's predictable. I'll switch it up <laughs> next year. You're like, wait a second, you you're not gonna leave the pumpkins in creepy places. Leave them in festive, no. nice, non creepy no. places. That's how you'll I'm, switch I'm, it up. I'm gonna leave them in, in corporate business parks only. <laughs> in front of a Goldman Sachs or some shit like exactly. that. Exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. That would be horrible. That would not be a a fun project, honestly. I'll make, but, I'll make I'll make sure I do that in one night this this year. I'll leave it though, in front of a Goldman you Sachs. You said you try to leave them at places that need Halloween spirit, and those places don't do not have Halloween yeah, spirit. Yeah, they don't give I a mean, shit so, about Halloween. <laughs> so That's really, it. is it so wrong to leave one there? I mean, I do do I do I think the ice cream section of a shop right needs Halloween spirit? No, but you know when it's tough to think of 31 different places and you're like it's 9 30 i don't feel like driving far i'm just gonna walk into a grocery store and put it in the ice cream thing but that stuff like that's usually the most fun 
because it's a that much is fun. And, you know, I like sometimes that. sometimes the idea the thing gets gets a little like monotonous trying to find like something that's always creepy or something that people know or a weird New Jersey uh, location. So Yo. occasionally, like <laughs> leaving it in a porta john is funny. <laughs> we straight up left them left them on people's porches, like people's that. houses. I appreciate that. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, we're just straight up we're putting them on people's porches like yo this house needs a pumpkin here we're putting it here and if yeah, they don't like exactly. it they'll have to deal with it one thing you should do and i think i mentioned it before i've done it before is when it's still october and somebody's got christmas stuff out they're getting one with a note that that's says, a good it's i, too I like that yeah like, please, absolutely like please stop I'm just what's <laughs> what sort of sick individuals putting up Christmas decorations like there's, October dude, there's 20th? People, there's Horrible. people that do it. I don't think I've ever seen that. I'd probably be really annoyed if I did see someone with like a Christmas wreath like October 20th or something like that. I'd be like, yo, what yeah. the fuck is wrong with this person? They're not I mean, mentally they're well. The <laughs> same level of mentally unstable as the person who puts <laughs> Halloween stuff up August 1st. So, Well, yeah, I guess I, well, I can't talk to you. I want to say then. something because Adam said something in our group chat on Instagram. And he said that he's basically using when he records with us. That's like his inauguration of how, like, yeah. spooky season. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely cool. love yeah. that because I've been hearing people say this, Adam, that August is their kickoff to spooky season. And I always, to me, it was always September. It but is. D- dude, yeah. all the candies are already being put out in stores. Like oh, I've seen four yeah. stores with candy in it already. For, people are already me, finding all the junk food and stuff already like all like, yeah, the cereals true. and candies because it's and out chocolates yeah everything for me out. though when you're doing this stuff and it's like like for me to do the show is is great it's kind of like the for like a kickoff to okay i gotta get ready for Love this it. but when people <laughs> are going if it's if it's 95 degrees and i'm seeing every halloween thing out and by october it's like clearance section that kills me so like i make myself wait at least until it feels like fall weather before I start, you know, really diving into it. Because come October, it's old news. I don't want it to feel that way. I want it to feel like, you know, when you were six years old and that stuff came out in the store at the right time, you know, you were in school, it's October, it shows up. I don't need yeah. to be drinking pumpkin spice when I'm like sweating to death. It needs to feel correct. Yeah. I'll, I'll be I honest agree. with you. I'm the same way. I, I You know, for me... Anytime I see – like, of course, you get excited when it's August, whatever, 2nd or 3rd, and you're, you're seeing Halloween Yeah, doses. Shit. It's fun yeah, to see it in doses. It's fun to see it, but I'll be honest. You know, I remember when I was younger, you know, uh, I don't know, younger, I mean, like, in my 20s at this point. <laughs> but when I was younger, I would get excited, you know, in August and, like, start drinking pumpkin beer and pumpkin coffee or whatever, pumpkin shit. You know, you start just have, you start having it. Now right. I'm noticing I'm taking my time Same. and I won't start ha- – yeah, I won't start having that stuff until like mid to late September just because it's, I don't want to get tired of be. it before October. It has to be so, mid-September. Mid-September is the, is the move. Yeah, I Some agree. Some people it's get excited to, though. It's good to see <laughs> but like I'm not lying to myself and tell me, you know, I'm still mowing the lawn and then I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm going to go buy a Halloween stuff right now. But you got to yeah. stock up on it before it's all sold out because come September sure. 1st, all that limited edition stuff, you're not going to find it. Oh, dude, t- today I think I saw on Twitter and I, I you know, I, I've made it very clear on the podcast several times that here in New York City, I can never find some of the more exclusive no, fucking it's not things. around here a lot. I've said it so many times. I've bitched about it so many times. And I saw today that they're going to release a uh, Hocus Pocus 2 cereal. Yep. I can't Ooh. wait. And I'm like, I definitely want to put, get my hands on that when I do my, you know, Halloween junk food. It's Marshmallow Winifred's. <laughs> uh, so, so to move along on the on the subjects of, of, of pumpkin, on that subject of pumpkin, we always cover iconic jack-o'-lanterns. We've covered some, uh, some heavy hitters in the past, some controversial picks where we discussed certain ones. I, I want to quiz. I'm going to quiz you, Adam. Can you no remember great. one of the pre- previous jack o' lanterns that uh, we talked about? Not your own, though. Do you I remember? Distinctly rem- I distinctly remember Dave and uh, Pumpkinhead. Yes. Um, yep. That's a good I one. I remember. I think Sam Hain was mine. 
So I, yes. yeah, pretty sure that was mine. Um, you did, uh, <laughs> you did know, My- I know, well, I obviously know which one you did because I hate it. It was the yes. Halloween, the Halloween Jack Lynn. <laughs> yes. So the, uh, I, to be honest, when I knew it was coming on, I'm like, oh no, I don't even remember what I picked before. And I couldn't yeah. remember what you guys picked in total. So I went, I'm like, all right, I know we haven't talked about these. So, <laughs> dude, there's so many, there's so many jack o' lanterns. If you Google it or just do a little research, take 20 minutes. There are so many jack o' lanterns from films. I had like six yeah. I could have picked from, and none of you guys mentioned them. So I, was, I have a list. I was I not in that mind frame. I was like, <laughs> oh, geez, like, I think I've spread everything thin, but. Dude, I have not. my picks for next yeah, year. Yeah, there are, there are a lot. <laughs> I already have my picks for next year. So if that's all I mean, anything, let's be, let's be real here. <laughs> We're really just picking jack o' lanterns we think are cool looking. Like they might exactly. not even be iconic. Right. They're it's, iconic they're just, to us. <laughs> to us, right. And well, to be honest with you, like there's a billion jack o' lanterns I could have picked that were cool looking, but I'm like, all right, what's somebody gonna actually know? And obviously if somebody is religiously listening to this podcast, they're gonna have a little more insight into important jack o' lanterns. So I'm trying to keep it something <laughs> that has some weight to it. Rather than like, oh, the jack o' lantern, you know, drawn on whatever. So it's just it's getting harder to actually fit the uh, the idea of iconic, at least for me. So you I think always, I think I picked a good one or two though. You you can always, and this is the rule for our listeners when it comes to us picking things, it, whether mm-hmm. it be just costumes, jack o' lanterns, whatever it is, it can be special to us the more personal the better and that's and why you like it and that's always kind yeah. of been how we do things little a little peek behind the haunted hangover curtain there that's just i don't want to i don't want to I, I don't want to throw the show off brand or anything <laughs> the, the way the way you throw it off brand is if you pick like an iconic like turkey so that'd be like that'd be like wait a second that's not that's not halloween or you know something like along those lines so that's what we're gonna do in, during thanksgiving iconic turkeys there you go oh spoiler alert okay no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I can think of that. one. <laughs> I can actually think of like two right now. So there you go. <laughs> what are they? Just I, I want to know what is it. Can't spoil it just in case we end right. up doing okay. that. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, you can you have me on for that one too. I have yeah. one pick, and we'll all fight over who gets to say. We're all gonna fight over the one iconic turkey that we all. <laughs> who's going with that? Yo, that'll be it'll be one. It'll be we'll talk about one turkey the entire episode. <laughs> that will be your least listened to. <laughs> yes, two downloads. That's what it'll. That's what it'll be of that episode. Oh uh, but Adam, since you're our guest, hit us with your first pick. Next morning, Ichabod's hat was found, and close beside it, a shattered pumpkin. All right. So to kind of circle back to my whole thing about trying to pick something that actually had some weight to it, and something that you know fit the word iconic. My yeah. um, my pick is the jack o' lantern that is thrown by the headless horseman in Disney's The Legend of Sleepy Hollow from 1949. Um, to kind of give uh, a bit of background to it, actually, the most most of this is a lot of background, simply because that pumpkin, that iconic pumpkin, that has now pretty much made everybody assume oh the headless horseman always has a pumpkin which is not true that pumpkin is on screen for exactly four seconds so (laughs) now for as big a part of the headless horseman that people think the jack-o'-lantern is that kind of proves it so to kind of give you a little bit of backstory um the legend of sleepy hollow is part of a Disney movie called The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. The Sleepy Hollow part of that film is the second half. Um, For those who don't know, obviously you know, but just for those who don't know, the premise of the story is every Halloween, the Headless Horseman looks for his head. He's out in the town of Sleepy Hollow, and if he can't find his head, he will take it from somebody else. Um, Some facts about it. Um, the headless horseman cannot leave the woods. He cannot cross the bridge, you know, the headless horseman bridge in actual sleepy hollow. Um, the bridge that's by the church and his powers leave him if he leaves the woods. So in that film, Ichabod rides home on his horse named gunpowder, um, thinking he's being followed. He sees the horseman with a sword drawn, 
following him sees he has no head <laughs> and he's being chased by the headless horseman and he manages to cross the bridge where the har- horseman can't get him but horseman takes a flaming jack lantern throws it at him and presumably hits him the next day all that's found of Ichabod is his old timey hat and a shattered pumpkin. So that's essentially the extent of where that pumpkin comes from in the film. Mm-hmm. The film is obviously based off of uh, the 1820 uh, novel by uh, Washington Irving, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow. A few things about the Headless Horseman. Um, he's also known as the Headless Hessian of the Hollow. He was a Hessian, a Hessian trooper who died Mm -hmm. in the Battle of White Plains in 1776 during the Revolutionary War. And he was beheaded specifically by a cannonball. Um, The story of the Headless Horseman as well resides in Irish folklore as the Dolaham translated to Dark Man. And it was also glommed by somebody in Texas as a Texas specific folklore one interesting fact about their version is apparently he carries the spine of a dead corpse whipping at it. That's people. brutal, right so there. That's pretty. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's tough. Pretty, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty creepy. Um, yeah. The pumpkin itself, if we're getting specific into the pumpkin that shows up for all of four or so seconds, um, again throws thrown at Ichabod, can't cross the bridge, presumably kills him, and so on. The look of it, if you are familiar, very traditional sideways triangle eyes, triangle nose, a dreadful frowning mouth. It's actually pretty cool looking, to be honest my with favorite, you. you see it it's my favorite. Yeah, you see it duplicated a lot. Um, my opinion on it, great looking jack-o'-lantern. Uh, as I mentioned to you guys before, the bigger fact is the idea of the headless horseman carrying a pumpkin or having a pumpkin head or, or whatever did not exist until Disney Crazy. put that out. It isn't noted at yeah. all in the original novel by Irving. Um, and where I think it holds its weight primarily is its influence is huge. Oh yeah, dude. Like any prop, any decoration, if you, if you, I was thinking of doing this, but I didn't have time. I wanted to ask 10 people. I'm like, Headless Horseman, does he have a pumpkin or not? And I guarantee you, more more so than not, um, you're gonna you're gonna have people assume he does. And you know, you had um I looked into Tim Burton's version that apparently does not have that in that version, but again, it's so it's in, it's in the movie though it's in the movie it's it, it's represented in the film you want to know how do you remember you you you, so you mentioned a prank yeah so i forget the character's name in this is in the tim burton sleepy spoiler hollow spoiler alert <laughs> this no. isn't really a spoiler from 1999 i have no idea yeah. i've never seen it so he's you, never you seen 15 it 15 years so I, I may have i don't know so so in the film you know, I forget the character's name, but even in the Disney version, there's the guy that's kind of bullying him. Okay. Do you remember? There's like that character. I forget his name. But in the Tim Burton version, Casper Van Dien <laughs> plays this that's character. Right. Perfect yeah. casting. Perfect casting. And it's like Christina Ricci's boyfriend. Like it's the, her character's mm-hmm. boyfriend. So what happens is when Johnny Depp, Ichabod Crane, shows up, uh, the Casper Van Dien character plays a prank on him. By pretending to be the horseman and throws a jack-o'-lantern at his head and it like cracks it. It's flaming and everything. And he throws it and it smashes them in the head and then they laugh and ride away on their horse. So even in that version, even though it's technically not the real horseman, they still mm-hmm. they still show it with that. It's still represented with the pumpkin, you know, in their minds, in the characters' minds. Um also, you know, there's a um, Are You Afraid of the Dark episode uh, that takes place in uh, I love Sleepy it Hollow. so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great one. And in that, the same thing happens. There's a there's a jack o' lantern. So it's funny there's how it's a bridge. In, the whole yeah, the thing bridge, is the, well, yeah. that's part of the the legend itself and the story. But it's just interesting that every any version of the headless horseman Sleepy Hollow, I feel like that pumpkin makes an appearance in some way. It's always just been there's even a low budget and i'm a big fan of it there's a low budget horror movie 
I believe it's called The Hollow. I've been wanting to cover it on the podcast. I'm sure we will eventually. Um, and in that, I think he has like a big monstrous jack-o'-lantern head, if I remember correctly. So like it exists. It's a thing. You know what I mean? That that the okay. character always has. So it's crazy how Disney right, had such an influence on just the existence of this character having a jack-o'-lantern head. So Right. And, and it makes you think how much again decorations or scarecrows yeah. or just kind of the the idea of a person with a pumpkin head comes from that cartoon you know there's a lot of yeah. things that are influenced by disney a lot of disney-fied versions of you know grimm's fairy tales and stuff and yeah. every you know the green the green witch face is totally due to wizard of oz it was never a thing before wizard of oz so is kind it of Santa, a similar thing it's similar to santa claus isn't the look of santa claus with the red and white coat and all that coca-cola that's coke yeah yep. so yep. it's so interesting how these companies created what we all know these characters or, or i guess what they're right. what they look like or what they're i don't know what they're supposed to look like but what we think right. they look like several decades and decades and generations and generations of people that are used to seeing these characters like that and the horseman yeah. with the with the jack-o'-lantern head is a prime example santa claus the Wicked Witch of the West, like you said, from um, uh, from Wizard of Oz. Even, even It's funny because when you go, and I'm pretty sure, I'm about 90% sure, when you go to Sleepy Hollow, I've been mm-hmm. several times. Uh, I'm sure you've been, right, Adam? You had to have gone. Uh, uh, at least, one, at least yeah. once a year, to, if not to do yeah. something, just to drive through. Yeah, and, and I'm pretty sure the cops, like the police department, they're bad. Like That's their the... symbol is, the, it, is a horseman with a pumpkin. Yep. I'm pretty sure there's a the pumpkin. Height. Yeah, so the high school the high school mascot is the the Sleepy Hollow or the Terrytown Horseman. Yeah, and I'm sure yep. there's a jack o' lantern so probably in that. Their street signs their street signs are orange and have the headless horseman between like. So if there's two words to the street name, they'll you know a little drawing of the headless horseman. horseman's on yeah, it. Yeah, I like, remember. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool that they have that, and even even. Though, and I'm I, and I'm pretty sure the pumpkins in those in that image, right? Uh, on the sure. street, um, maybe good not. Question. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. I'll, I don't know if there's a pumpkin in the design, but there's definitely something that has to do with the with the folklore of it in the design of the cops on the cop cars and stuff. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So you're definitely right about that. Yeah, I know that. I know. I know it's 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 a guy on a horse as to whether or not they have a pumpkin like in the silhouette. I'm not sure, but I'll be there this year. I'll check it out. I mean, honestly, Salem with the witch going. Yeah. Going to Tarrytown, going to Tarrytown, especially during the fall is a thing. Like it's a, yeah. it's almost like a tourist, you know, it's a tourist spot. Like people 100%. go there. Horseman's yeah, Hollow I mean, is a popular yeah. haunt that's there. And it's called Horseman's Hollow. And I there they have a horse. That. It's great. It's it's not very long, but it's cool. Um, but that has a horseman, and I'm about ninety percent sure there's a pumpkin somewhere, a jack o' lantern somewhere with that character. So and this and it's just like headless horseman uh, in what's it called by uh, Kingston upstate in the cats. Yeah, that's, uh, in, uh, in Ulster. Yeah, it's Ulster, the same Ulster New York. That's it. Yeah, Ulster's right next to Kingston. I'm pretty sure um, there's a pumpkin or jack o' lantern there too. So <laughs> I think so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean, li- listen, they legit have a person on a horse. <laughs> Oh, I know. With, with a fucking with no head uh, riding around with a sword in its hand and i think it does it might have a pumpkin i'm not sure it probably but, does i wouldn't be surprised yeah. i mean yeah either way you know it, it can't be denied it's it's such an it's got so many offshoots and uh yeah my my second pick will be far less you know uh, important uh. for sure avoid fuck-ups fools i call them you all know the type. Everything they have anything to do with turns into a disaster, no, how, no matter how good it may sound. Yeah. Trouble for themselves and everyone connected with them. A boo is bad news and it rubs off. Don't let it rub off on you. So my first pick is from William S. Burroughs. And it's his jack-o'-lantern carved with a hatchet. Renowned writer and visual artist, he is considered a primary figure 
of the degeneration and a major postmodern author whose influence reached into pop culture and literature. Naked Lunch, The Wild Boys, and Junkie are just some of his most well-known books that I highly recommend checking out. I mean, Naked Lunch is a fucking movie. If you've never seen it, you should. It's pretty great. My man, William S. Burroughs. So on October 31st, 1996, photographer Philip Haying visited William S. Burroughs in Lawrence, Kansas for dinner alongside Bernard and Francois Heidsieck. The jack-o'-lantern Burroughs had carved had a traditional face carved on one side, but on the other, he took a hatchet to it, and needless to say, it wasn't pleasant to look at. Haying said it was the most intense jack-o'-lantern he has ever seen. So intense, he asked Burroughs to pose beside it for a picture. In the photo, you could see the pockets of Burroughs' jacket sagging down because he was carrying several weapons on him. So, William S. Burroughs is known for having weapons on him all the time. That's just a little side thing right there. Like, he was known as that neighbor who just always had a gun on him or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well-known poet Allen Ginsberg was visiting and helped Burroughs deck out the front room for all the trick-or-treaters. Burroughs' art dealer, Jose Ferez Curie, had brought a dozen giant candy skulls from Mexico. Ginsburg and Allen had set up a display of the skulls just inside the front door with all kinds of candy on the table. After dinner, just at 7 p.m., the Burroughs household has yet to receive any trick-or-treaters. Burroughs pacing and depressed, no trick-or-treaters had come yet. Finally, at 7.15, the trick-or-treaters started coming. Greeted by Burroughs and Ginsburg, a few kids even dressed as Bob Dole. Burroughs spoiled the kids with candy and posed for pictures with them. Those kids were lucky enough to go home with life-size mystical candy skulls in their bags, given to them by none other than William S. Burroughs. I can't even imagine being a kid in the mid-90s knowing that this famous writer lives in the middle of fucking Kansas <laughs> and is just wants people to come trick-or-treat at his house loaded with weapons in his jacket and just wants to enjoy Halloween with all these trick-or-treaters. Like, to me, that is so <laughs> surreal and insane. It sounds like something I mean, out of a movie. That's like the house you I want was to gonna avoid. Say, <laughs> it's like there's there's an original movie premise based on a true story. <laughs> yes. Probably doesn't end as pleasantly, though. It probably is pretty. No, no. <laughs> in a movie, it would end way worse. Something bad would happen Listen, to the kids or something. I love, love, love. I mean, I, I don't know how old he was at that time, but... I mean, I love that the dude was so – like he was just waiting for kids to come trick-or-treat. Like that just shows you like if you're a Halloween person, you're a Halloween person till you're fucking right. dead. Not for sure. And, and this guy was just waiting for it. He went all out. And just imagine getting candy from pe- – like like these artists and photo- – uh, these artists and poets, like these people that were like prime like – individuals of the beat generation which i i love that era like getting stuff from them and probably not even realizing it like yeah. imagine that <laughs> yeah, no one do six year old sure. don't care yeah i'm sure the kids that were going up to him this like, isn't you know, a reason treating, this is stupid they probably just didn't even they were just probably like whatever this is strange they probably <laughs> probably threw it at like the teacher they hated's house as like a prank <laughs> So, so but you, it's just, se- you sent me a picture of this, Dave, and the pumpkin's <laughs> all fucked up, right? Like it's, it's all just, it's just fucking cut up. It's just like literally, he probably just took a bunch of wax at it, and it was like, "Here you go, here's my pumpkin," and I could completely see him doing yeah, that. Yeah, like but our, on our the flip side, yeah, have to see he, this picture. He did by make, the way. <laughs> yeah, you have you're gonna have to post it on Instagram. Yeah, but he did post it. He did carve a jack o' lantern. But he decided to hack it up on the other side and then, you know, so, you know, the photographer's like, yeah, I'm going to take a picture with this. It's really and, deranged and, looking, honestly. <laughs> honestly. And his demeanor and, his, and like, his, the way he's posing, he looks so serious. Yeah. He's just like, this, like, this is my fucking pumpkin. <laughs> he's owning that pumpkin. He's like, yeah. this is my pumpkin. You know what's funny about that? Like, so you sent the photo and... I'm familiar with him, right? But if I you haven't said, seen it. I'm you, curious. You haven't, oh, so we shared it in the in the group chat the three of us have. So you have to take you have to go back and take a look at it. But in the picture, if you showed this to anyone, they would think that's a serial killer, a hundred percent. Like he looks, or just a wacko, or, or something. just a wacko. They would not know this guy's a famous writer. Like he's written great, like 
stories and things like that. And movies have been made based on his stories. Like, you would never know. And just the fact that, and the, my favorite part of this jack-o'-lantern, I use that word very loosely, is that it's like, I want to know why he just did that. He just, like, whacked it a few times and he was like, there's my jack-o'-lantern. Like, it's a, that takes a certain type of person. <laughs> like, uh, like us to describe, mean, like, like, Dave, your story, the way you, you know, you articulated what, like, the, 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 the backstory to it, like, does not describe it well enough until you see the picture of right. him next to the pumpkin. And well, then you're that, like, okay. This is the All funny right. thing, though. Go ahead, Adam. I, I, I was going to say, I did, I did see it in the chat, and I was just like, I, I, I saw it in passing. I must have yeah, been working, yeah. and I scrolled through, and I didn't read the content. And I'm like, whose crazy neighbor is this? <laughs> yes, that's what he looks like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Terribly. <laughs> it's great, though. So, so here, here's, I think this is my favorite part about this, and it's that, okay, so you could say what you want. You know, he looks like a nut job. You know, he's, you know, it's just an... A, a, it looks like it's just a hacked up back of a pumpkin, <laughs> yeah. but the but like but the good. story behind oh, it it's is amazing. so great because this guy just wanted to have a fun Halloween. Like he literally yeah. just wanted to innocent. have a fun Halloween. It was an and it was so thing. heartwarming yeah. to me that he just wanted kids to come trick or treat at his house. Dude, I love it personally. Like, when I, <laughs> like to go to again. Uh, just looking at the photo with no context, you're like, what the fuck? Again, I'll, I'll say that. So, like, any of our listeners just look at this photo and don't know anything about it, you're going to be like, what the hell are these guys? Why did these guys pick mm-hmm. this? But I totally agree. And at a glance, you're like, this is kind of twisted for some reason. It's yeah. just the way he looks and his house and the pumpkin all tore up. But the the heartwarming story is just funny. And it's it, it goes to show you people are sometimes oblivious. Like... He must have just been oblivious and and didn't realize that this looks like fucking Leatherface's jack o' lantern. Not, yeah. not. I mean, like, would you <laughs> would you would you let your kids take candy from him if no, you didn't no. know who he was? Realistically, I, I I don't know if that even makes a difference. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. They'd be uh, like, no, don't go over there. Don't go to that guy's house. <laughs> but you know what I want to know? You want to know? And I don't know if there's any details on this. Did he like stand in front of his house? Like you might have said it in the story, and I didn't catch it. But was well, he, it just, he was just yeah, he was he just, just wait, so what? I, so I, I, from what I understand, they like what what they did was, and I've seen this before. Yeah, people will open up like the front, like half of their living room. Yeah, where you could walk in and grab yeah, candy no. and stuff like that, and that's what yeah. it seemed. What he did, he Not he today. decorated. Yeah, no, not today. It's different he, times. Yeah. He he decorated like the front portion of his room so kids could go in and take candy and stuff like that. So <laughs> and listen, they weren't handing out just candy. Like I said, the, the one skulls. the yeah. his art dealer had brought like like life actual skull sized candy. Yeah, that's cool. You know, from another you know, from somewhere else and, and kids were lucky enough to get that. That's what I'm saying. Like imagine if like you were a kid and like you did, like you finally like okay, like I'm you know I'm 18 years old. I'm gonna read Naked Lunch, yeah. right? And I see you know you see the movie Naked Lunch, and you're just like, wait a second. You, and like say your parents like, oh, that's the guy that that lives down over there. And you're like, what? And it's just the whole. It's like that light bulb moment, and it's like holy shit, I got a fucking candy skull from William S. Burroughs. Oh, that's sick, dude. You wouldn't appreciate that until you're much <laughs> older. In all honesty. Right. That's something you'd appreciate when you're like 25, not when you're. Like I would love <laughs> to find it, to 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 see if there's interviews or something with kids that grew up and and had that experience. I would love to see. I would just love to to just to, to just to read about it, just to see what they have to say about it. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the you know current day equivalent to that? Like if uh, I don't know, Steve Buscemi was giving out like Halloween candy and. <laughs> <laughs> like oh you got you got you got uh custom candy from steve you sent me and we're just, your kids are just like it was just the old man with the weird eyes and the jacket yeah. t- i mean that's yeah i mean it's possible that would be amazing too if steve Buscemi was handing out candy and he just that lazily carved the jack-o'-lantern by stabbing it 50 times <laughs> How, his yeah. method would be like he just puts a exacto knife in one spot and i was tired <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something I would, like that i would have loved if the dude like grabbed the, like 
like if this guy like grabbed the pumpkin, put it like on like a boulder or something, walked around, like, walked <laughs> away from it, grabbed out his gun and like shot it four times, and then that was his. That would be that would be really <laughs> funny. That'd, I that'd think I'd like really, that more. That'd be amazing if that's how like that's how he carved it instead of just stabbing it. But I'll be honest, I still appreciate his fucking you know stabbed up fucking gutted pumpkin jack o' lantern. It's like, dude, honestly, the picture's great. It's a great photo. Like just the photo is great. <laughs> You have to post it. Well, I, I, I know it. you'll put it up. I know you'll put it up it's when you just, post it on Instagram. It's just so. a great. It's just a great yeah. photo. And a great and a great yeah. story. And I and I can tell Absolutely. you what a lot of our listeners probably would have never even heard of this. I, I'm pretty sure. So that's that's. I didn't. So yeah. Thank there you, go. Dave. Adam yeah, didn't even course. know about this. So there you go. It's a great, great pick, Dave. <laughs> this guy. Could he have at least waited until October 31st? <laughs> Obliterating you is such a thrill, Spider Clown. This is so bootiful. <laughs> well, like boo to that wordplay. <laughs> Let me tell you, whoever this jack o' lantern guy is, he's definitely more trick than treat. So, my first pick. And, and I'm going to say this at the top. I am not a big superhero fan at all. I am, I'm I'm surprised you picked this. <laughs> yes. And, and that's why honestly. I did that. I'm not the biggest, <laughs> like, superhero comic guy. I like comics, but I wouldn't say, like, superhero comics are my thing. Now, I'll say this. I enjoy, like, animated series. Like, I'm a big fan of the original X-Men and from the 90s sure. and, you know, the Batman animated series from the 90s. Obviously, because of our age, we all kind of like those shows. Yeah. But I wouldn't say I'm the biggest fan. All these Marvel movies and all this shit that's going on now, uh, I watch them casually. Sometimes Next. I get – I'll be honest. I get a little confused because I, I, I don't know all the references <laughs> <laughs> from the previous movie and sometimes I'm I'll be – Listen, they're like roller coasters, and I, I'm pretty Absolutely. sure we've said this on the show before. They're like roller coasters. You go up, and then when you go down <laughs> that big drop, you, you you know, you get the excitement. You get all those feelings. It's fun. And then when you land, you're like, all right, I'm done. You know what I mean? So that's kind of what – that's how I treat the superhero films and superheroes. Fair enough. Never, never been my thing. But last year, I stumbled. I stumbled upon this character. And that's the Spider-Man villain, Jack-O-Lantern. Now, this is how I stumbled on this guy. Because I had never heard of him before. And, and I did a little research. He is not high in the uh, in the rogues gallery for Spider-Man. <laughs> he's, not, he's not in the top five. You know, most people know Dr. He's Octopus. Not. He won't get Rhino. his own. Yes. His He'll own never be MCU in the Marvel movies. Video. Yes. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> He'll never pop up in the MCU. He'll never be a a, a, a big. You know, watch us say that in the next Spider Man movie. Jack O' Lantern's the villain. <laughs> That'd be amazing. But no, I highly, highly doubt that. Um, but the way I found out about this guy was so I forget why I was on Disney Plus, and during Halloween, during the Halloween season last year, what they do is on the main screen, main menu, they put. Halloween associated stuff, movies, shows, episodes of shows. And I saw a Spider-Man episode, right? And I was like, wait a second. Uh, this looks cool. And the, the title of the episode is Halloween Night at the Museum. That's the title of the episode. So obviously that grabbed my attention. And it's short, 20 minutes. I forget what I was doing. I might have been editing this show for all I know. <laughs> I might have been editing, uh, editing an episode of the podcast. And I put it on in the background. And I was like, oh, shit, this is a really cool character because in the episode, there's this character called Jack-O-Lantern. Now, let me describe this character. He's basically the Hobgoblin or Green Goblin with a Jack-O-Lantern head. That's, that's my best way of describing him. He flies around in a hoverboard. He throws bombs because I did a little research on him as well outside of this episode. He throws pumpkin bombs because you all know Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, threw, they, they throw pumpkin bombs, which honestly are iconic in themselves. Like you can say right. that. That's what, what I thought you were picking at first no, when you mentioned this. I wanted to go a little more obscure. So, again, that's you can you can call those iconic because most people, whenever you think of the Green Goblin, the Hobgoblin, you think Absolutely. of those yeah. of those pumpkin bombs. So, I saw this character and I was like, oh shit, this is like a cool design. He's like the Green Goblin 
with a jack-o'-lantern head. And the ba- that's the best way to describe him. He, and his the actual jack-o'-lantern is flaming, no nose, and he's got the uh, the eye holes and the smile. You know, it's very classic. I feel like that's a thing. They love forgetting the nose in certain animated <laughs> versions of jack-o'-lanterns. And this character in this specific episode is no different. Um, Dave, I'm sure one year when we do our animation month, we'll probably cover this episode. Because probably. Because it, it is a fun I'd one. I'd watch it. I would watch it's it. It's a fun one. It's a, a quick watch. Now... I did, a little, I did a little research on the character of Jack O'Lantern. So I can tell you this. He debuted in 1981, which was crazy to me. I was like, damn, he's been around a long time. And he was he debuted in a, in a Spider-Man comic that I believe was titled Machine Man number 19. Again, not a comic guy. I don't know what the fuck that means. But that's the issue he debuted in. So he's been around for a minute. He's been around a long time. So kind of just looking into the character, and I'm not going to go into every detail because there's a lot. The, the, the lore behind this guy is kind of chaotic, but I can tell you this. About five different people have put on this persona, like five or six. I read six. this, and I really yeah. I thought this was interesting. That, yeah. to me, was the coolest thing. One of the coolest things about this character, and I am a little part of me looking into him. I kind of want to go back and find these episodes, like these issues, and read them. Um but there was a group of jack-o'-lanterns at one point portraying like a group of people looked like this character. I guess right. Spider-Man was was fighting them or whatever. Um, and even at one point, because for the most part, the character is a mercenary. And I, I think some of the some of the background on it is that that person became a hobgoblin or a green goblin. But like this was their previous persona. But right. there was a version that was possessed by a demon and he was given superhuman strength. So mm. I, I recommend going on Google and just doing a little research if you're curious and never heard of him. Because I'll be honest, I never see this guy mentioned. I never, ever see him. I, I, there's so many Spider-Man fans that I never see. He's never in video games. I, I, it was the first time I'd ever seen him was on that animated series, the original Spider-Man animated series from the 90s. Mm-hmm. I don't remember him ever popping up. So he's a deep cut I, villain. I took it I took it upon myself to go on Google and look at this dude. Are you aware that he had his own Marvel Masterpiece trading card? I did not know that. I know he had an action mm-hmm. figure. I did see that. Uh, I have to Google yeah. this uh, card. What does it look like? Uh, it's very uh, maybe it's not Marvel masterpiece. It, I mean, it looks Marvel Spider Man Fleer Ultra nineteen ninety five base cool. trading card. Wow, it's three dollars awesome. on eBay. <laughs> wow, the card's not even card's not even worth that much. Yo, so. <laughs> those cards, those, those Marvel cards, oh, I was obsessed we used to, with those. As a yeah, kid. same here. Yeah. And they, I think they used to do all the all like the deep cuts, the Everyone famous got shit, a card, all yeah. of it. Yeah. I, so, to throw in a funny side note about Marvel cards, when I was in fourth grade, me and my friends collected them and traded them. Mm-hmm. And there was about two cards with scantily clad women, Psylocke and the White Queen. Well, the principal oh, of our school found <laughs> out that we were had these cards. And they're like, what are these you know, fourth graders doing yeah. with these racy cards? And they said we weren't allowed to have them in school anymore. And my friends <laughs> and I... We're like, we're going to walk out. We're going to have a walk out. We're going to protest because we want our Marvel cards. <laughs> no, because I mean, that's your Marvel cards. You they, can't. they were a big deal. The hologram cards too, man. Yo, that's, I have a question sick. for you guys when it comes to I the cards. I have some for you guys too. And I know this is a tangent. Did you guys have a binder with all your cards in them? Of course. Absolutely. Of I know course. All right, just make it sure. You have it still? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fucking great. I have, that's awesome. I still have my box. They, they, so like I used to be into all trading cards, and I used to have a box that said Marvel cards. I still have it. Yeah. Um, I gotta find it. But let me just tell you guys something real quick. I may have mentioned this. I'm sorry if I did. I'm saying it again. Louis gonna get mad at me. <laughs> when I when I was in middle school, probably around sixth grade, my friend Andrew and I, we used to take all the doubles and triples of the of the comic book cards. And we had these little pieces of we had an exacto knife, and we had these little Uh-oh. pieces of, of thin, uh, like almost like styrofoam board type of stuff, and we made three D cards yep. 
yeah. of all of all these things of of you know whatever the Punisher whoever yeah. you know Ghost Rider fucking Daredevil and we made them and people like them so like kids would be like hey could you know can I buy this like we'd sell them for like five bucks or like two dollars you guys were hustlers so, in school no, so listen listen <laughs> it gets better it gets better so in middle school I don't know how it happened. But there was like some entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurial program that was doing a story on kids that were doing like little businesses and shit like that. So we got chosen to be in this fair and we were called, <laughs> we called ourselves, we called ourselves the three dimensions and yeah. <laughs> Oh Dude, my god. The, the comic the comic book store in my town sold those. So I don't know if your idea got jacked, but they would sell them and they would put them in like the deeper like collector cases like let's say if you had like absolutely 19 exactly to 20 what cards you're talking about. and you close them in the case yep. and so it looked, yeah yeah, yeah. I've, uh-huh. I've seen that so and like it, I, yeah we, <laughs> yo, your idea we, got jacked. <laughs> the yo, three dimensions I, I were just, jacked. <laughs> listen, I just remember being in my English homeroom class and getting called into another classroom and they're like, oh, come in, come in, come in. And they're like, what did you you've do? been chosen for, it was called Kids in Biz. You've been chosen for the Kids in Biz. And I'm just oh like, my God. yo, this That's is sick. Great. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That is cool. So we went, cool. and we went to this big job fair thing and we yeah. sold cards. We got interviewed. We were in the newspaper. It was fucking crazy. The three dimensions. Here we go. Represent. Dan, I think you got to bring it. I think you got to bring it back, Dan. I'm I think sorry. That was represent. Your, <laughs> that you was have, your calling. Do you, <laughs> I don't you think have so. any of the, uh, I no, don't think so. On, I'd have to, I I could take a look. I got I got to ask my friend Andrew if he still has them because we're still oh, we're still God. really good friends. But um, that's funny. The three dimensions. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad you brought that up, Adam, because we <laughs> <laughs> we made a business out of it for like three oh, months. Oh my God. Oh, um, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, that, that, to, to jump back onto the main topic, the tangent corner there about Fleer Card and Dave's experience with him, his, his hustling in school with the three dimensions. Yeah, it sounds like, the, you know, the three dimensions sounds like an old, like, wrestling tag 80s. team. Absolutely. 80s wrestling yeah. tag team. Um, but yeah, I chose this guy because I think he has this a cool look. I think the Jack O' Lantern. He Spider-Man definitely has a cool villain, look. For just sure. looks cool. Very reminiscent of Sam Hain from the real Ghostbusters, which we've talked about several times, and he's come up several times. Um, and, and I just think people don't appreciate him. As, I feel like he should be iconic. I'm like, how the fuck is this character not more Yo, popular? Maybe you, you know, talking I, about him is going to bring him into the. You I know, highly the doubt that. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I think maybe working against him. as I look at the pictures, he's like Ghost Rider, but with a pumpkin head. Yeah, yeah, but yeah he kind of does. He kind of looks the like it. Yeah, he's like yeah. a combination of the Green Goblin and and Ghost Rider, but with a pumpkin head. But like kids love Halloween, adults love Halloween too, obviously. But I don't see how he did not become a bigger deal. Like, why aren't there T-shirts with Jack O' Lantern on them? That's it. I'm doing it. We always talk about oh, T-shirt ideas. Yo, that's a really good idea. <laughs> That'd be a sick shirt. So it ex- I mean, there's got to be one on like Red Bubble or somebody made their own. You know. Maybe I, I don't think so. You should do it. I, he also I might have to. <laughs> I shouldn't say a, he. Be, be, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Adam. Somebody made a Funko Pop of it. Of that makes sense. Actually, I believe that because they make actually, obscure shit. You know what? No, that's an actual product. Yeah, that what? makes sense. I am looking at it. Funko Pop Venom Venomized Jack O' Lantern. Yeah. You oh, can wow. go buy so, that right now on Amazon. Twenty five bucks. Get at it before somebody else. Because they make deep cut stuff. I, yeah, I believe that. Do. I believe that. I know he has an it action looks cool figure. As hell. Yeah, it looks cool. I know he's. If he's got a Funko Pop, that's that's good. And if he's got an action figure, that's cool too. But I still don't think enough people talk about him. Like I, instead of it's always the Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, fucking Doctor Octopus, all those the, the Lizard and Sandman and all that shit. Mephisto. Venom. Mephist, not nah, a uh, Mysterio. Mysterio, that's it. He, Mysterio <laughs> yeah. kind of looks like him too. Yeah, a little bit. Maybe that's why. Right. Maybe he's too reminiscent of these other characters, and they don't want to. My man gets my man gets put at the bottom of the list all the time. Fucking Jack O' Lantern, they're playing him all the time, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he should be way, way. <laughs> he should be way more prominent. But again, maybe that's just me because I love Halloween and I love Jack O' Lantern. So uh, that's probably why agree. I feel this way. So. 
I'm glad you guys agree with me. <laughs> totally. Look what's rising out of the pumpkin patch this Halloween. The pumpkin cutter, a great way to let your kids carve their own pumpkins without sharp edges that cut little hands. It even makes toothy grins easy to do. The pumpkin scoop, removes seeds and pulp better than any spoon. And the pumpkin light, replaces dangerous candles with glowing results. Have a great pumpkin this Halloween with the pumpkin cutter, pumpkin scoop, and pumpkin light. Pumpkin cutter products available at Long's Drugs and Safeway. So, to drastically descend from importance i actually think this is the most important one to be honest with you thanks well so it's funny because to go from something that's i mean let's pretty much say like globally known you know its influence goes very far to something that is very niche um so my second pick is something called the pumpkin light. Now I'm sure Lou, you'll have to drop a sound bite in at least or something on the social media you know to, I even will. Cue people, <laughs> to even cue people in as to what the heck this is. So the pumpkin light is exactly what it sounds like. It is a light in the shape of a pumpkin that is made for children to put inside a pumpkin instead of using a candle. The the kick to this is it is a very 80s thing. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably nostalgic. I almost want to say more, more so to people on the East Coast, but apparently not. Um, so so here's a rundown. It's a plastic light in the shape of a pumpkin, basically for kids. It's a safer alternative to a candle. It has a very cherubic pumpkin face. It was released in 1987, my company i have no idea because i couldn't find anything on this hmm. thing so um it was often sold with the pumpkin cutter with a k <laughs> by the way yeah. and the pumpkin that's important. scoop that's important yes the k is just just yeah. appealed to the kids yes. um often sold in it's also sold in groups of threes um and most people if they you know what the heck this is will remember the commercials now the commercials are fantastic, and I went back and I watched the four or five of them that are posted on YouTube, and each is as charming as the next. I remember them as a kid very clearly. Um, one particular thing as I went through the, the different variants of the YouTube videos is you could tell that the the pumpkin light was sold in different areas of the country, some on the East Coast, some more yeah. inland, you know, middle America, because of the simple fact that the end of every pumpkin light commercial, it says a list of the local drug stores and shopping areas that are shopping stores that, that carried it. So for example, I, I, as I watched everyone at the end, it's like now available at Pathmark, whatever. Woolworth. Some of this. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, Woolworth, so here we go. Were definitely ones here, over, they were definitely yeah. here. Here we go. So I took note of the uh the stores that this was sold at so particularly east coast get ready for a nostalgia trip so you have pathmark pathmark's pretty much dead caldor rest in peace man i don't know if you had it like closer to caldor Caldor. yeah dude i remember caldor (laughs) the precursor to home depot rickles um i don't remember rickles yeah that might have been just a new jersey thing but like you get more in the center of the country wall bounds walworths kings dan's supreme and there is a few weird ones i saved for the end drug world because that's Yo, just, dr- drug oh, world sounds drug. awesome <laughs> drug world Doesn't, i want to go to drug world. i don't even do drugs and a drug world sounds so fucking right, it cool. sounds shady um spags <laughs> spags oh, Os- osco drug okay lee words and i'm gonna save the best for last. Purity Supreme. <laughs> purity Supreme. Get your, get your <laughs> pumpkin light at Purity Supreme. Um, <laughs> so, Yo, dude, those stores. It's so funny just like running down those. Because honestly, I only recognize like five of them. And then Drug right, World exactly. just sounds cool. So, 
So like so your mom's gonna thing. be like, I'll be right back. I have to go to Purity Supreme to pick up my foundation <laughs> and a pack of a pack of like RC Cola. But yeah, so that was half the fun of watching those. And then a few other things I noticed throughout the different variants or different versions of the commercials. Um, one of the earlier versions from '86 uh, also mentions the pumpkin light can be used as like a safety device when you're out trick or treating, yeah. so you don't get hit by a car. You know. And hang it around your neck or some shit like fucking right exactly tie it up <laughs> and uh the weird part about that one is there's a, a, a three or four kids that are portrayed one is i think a skeleton one's a pirate and there's yeah. also a little girl go watch that youtube video and tell me she does not look like a kkk member <laughs> I, have <to> go <laughs> back. I have to go back oh, and man. watch it oh man. the some... thing i <laughs> Wait, wait. Let me That's say something horrible. about the light. So yeah. I had one of these. I definitely had. So did one of these. I. I did too. They don't light up for shit. They no. sucked. <laughs> no, you're gonna get hit by a car. Yeah. Yes. You're dead. <laughs> if you're if you're an idiot and tying one of those things around your neck or holding it, you're gonna get fucking whacked nope. by a bus or something. It's still shit. fucking cool. Intentionally. Intentionally. <laughs> Someone, a bus driver's going to be like, look at this fucking dumbass. Or run him over with their pumpkin light. <laughs> Swerve and then take your candy. They're going to fucking uh, meet Joe Black like they did with fucking Brad Pitt. I don't know if you guys know that reference. Whack you with two cars. Time. <laughs> um, uh, you know what's? You know what I do like about these commercials? And I'll say this. I love how the voiceover I, – I don't know if it's for all of them or for one of them. The dude's doing like Igor. a Peter – like a, either a Peter Laurie or like Vincent yeah. – like a boot, Yeah, like a boot, bootleg Vincent Price. I yeah. love it like, so yeah. much. <laughs> like he's trying his best to do it, but I do love it too, even though it's like not the – best impression of those actors but it's still but great. it's supposed to be shitty it's better because of it's course. shitty you of know course. like in in another one of the uh the commercials that i've listed here uh one of the later ones it looks like it takes place in a frankenstein's castle and then they're doing that voiceover yeah. and there's a like a nervous mad scientist and it looks like it would have been a mcdonald's happy meal commercial it has that yeah, vibe definitely and and um one of the guys in the like there's kids there's the mad scientist and then there's a guy who literally looks like a toothless louis ck who plays <laughs> igor oh and my god so that that's a pretty good one too that is a good one um, that is that's like then, the really short one right oh uh, yeah there's one that's like really than, short okay it looks like it's, it looks a little more 90s than anything a little more colorful yeah. but and then just to kind of go over like the the last few is there's a one from 89 where it's the combo it's got the pumpkin cutter and the the scooper and all that stuff with a and k. the beginning of the thing what <laughs> with, with a, a k, k. <laughs> yeah with a k thank you for reminding me um where the first few sections sections of that commercial is the guy the uh, dad trying to carve a pumpkin with literally like an eight inch flimsy like you he's gonna cut a main artery in his arm like <laughs> this isn't carving pumpkin so dangerous and unsafe and you should see dad like he's he's got the shakes trying to carve out the eye and the yeah. kids are sitting the kids are sitting to the side with pumpkins in their lap looking absolutely aggravated because dad's trying to carve with you know a, a, a friday the 13th machete and then it goes to <laughs> don't the, do know, that dad are, <laughs> it's like, oh, little Jimmy's using the pumpkin cutter. He's more responsible. And you see him accidentally kind of, you know, slip on a cut. And they're like, you're not yeah. going to lose a finger, basically. <laughs> and, you know, the kitchens in those commercials, man. Go back and watch the ones with the kitchens. You want to talk about, like, time warp to the 80s? Like, just the flower print and drabby-looking colors. Like all it's missing is the like the Tupperware with the mushrooms on it and all that stuff <laughs> that everybody's mom had. Yeah, dude. I, I, you so, know, I, you know what's funny about the pumpkin light? I'm shocked it's still not a thing. I'm just shocked. Yeah, that you can't buy them now. I, I, I just agree. looked on eBay. A brighter version. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously a <laughs> like obviously an actual a, proper version. A, bri a proper version that you won't like get run over by somebody. But that's actually useful. Honestly, dude, I just I just went on YouTube really quick. YouTube, eBay, my bad. I went on eBay really quick and I just typed in pumpkin light 80s to see if one would pop up to buy. Didn't. Didn't. 
Nope. So strange. That's there's a guy in the comments weird. of one of there's a guy in the comments of one of the videos said like I guess the video was posted like five years ago. He's like I just yeah. snagged one on eBay for six dollars and I'm like that's a good idea and I did exactly what you just did. You can't, find, like, damn, you can't up. find it. Yeah, I'm yeah. just surprised. Damn. It's so sim- and obviously it was a cheap product from what I remember when I because I had one too, and I'm just shocked you can't find them. That's so it's almost like they didn't exist. They vanished off the face of the earth. The fucking pumpkin light, so weird. Well, let's do a little it's research. Crazy. It'll pop up and it'll be forty dollars because of inflation. Probably, not, dude. Not even. It'll be like eighty dollars. Someone will have one mint in the box still in the packaging. Sure, and they'll charge two hundred and fifty dollars for it. Buy it now. (laughs) Free shipping. Buy it now. $250 on eBay. But I'm just surprised it's still not a thing. Like you don't see them in Target. You don't see them at Home Depot. I'm I'm shocked just because it's pretty timeless when you think about it. All it is is a little pumpkin light. That's all it is. So, yep. Yeah. You know, I mean, what would you actually pay for the full trifecta of pumpkin face products? The scooper, the light, <laughs> the I mean, scooper, the light, the fucking safety knife or whatever. Yeah, bucks. Exactly. The knife, Yo. the knife, probably pumpkin masters bought them out. It's like, d- d- just Maybe. make this disappear. Make this Maybe. disappear. Probably. Pumpkin because, masters dude, has pumpkin yeah. masters has a market locked. <laughs> yeah, dude. When you think about it, right. When you go to a Spirit or Target and you go and buy a light to put in your jack o like, like not a real flame, obviously, you're using a little light, there are all those ones that flicker or change yeah. color now, and they're like a small circular tab, basically, yeah. that you push yeah. down on, drop it in the jack o lantern, and then it, you know, it just lights up. So I'm just surprised that I, I'm, you're probably right. One of those companies probably either evolved, turned into a, this new company. Or they just bought them or something. Whatever company was making them. So really strange that they don't exist now. Just it was really a mob strange. deal. Maybe possibly the, it was all that, up front. The, <laughs> the pumpkin light family got threatened by the up and coming pumpkin masters family. Like you're gonna disappear and no more pumpkin <laughs> gonna, light. That's why you can't find it. <laughs> we're gonna throw you in the river. We're gonna put fucking like concrete right. shoes and throw you in the river for fucking. Get rid of that fucking pumpkin light. <laughs> Burn them all. Burn them all. Look for, look for every. Um, Purity spirit or whatever it is. <laughs> Purity, to- supreme. <laughs> Purity supreme. Purity supreme. What a name. Or the, or the drugstore. Go to the drugstore. You, 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 you got to go over to every Spags and drug buy world. Them. And we're going to troll Drug the world. <laughs> drug world. Okay. No, you got to go to drug so world. Cool. No, That's no, no, a cool no, name that, for a band. Not, not that drug world. The other drug world. <laughs> Yo, dude. There was a dude outside of drug world in the corner just selling fucking pumpkin lights. He was opening up a fucking bag and, hey, and hey, just buddy. selling pumpkin lights. Yo, man, drug hey. world, man. <laughs> You're looking for a pumpkin light? Yo, I got listen, I wanted to, let me just say something really quick. Back when Mortal Kombat, this is very off topic, but it reminds me of something. <laughs> back What's when new? <laughs> back when Mortal Kombat first came out, there was a bar slash billiards place called Shooters. Okay. Now, what 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 year did Mortal Kombat come out? Was it ninety two or ninety three? Ninety three. Something yeah. about that. Yeah. It's like ten yeah, years 90, old. Between ninety three and ninety five, around that right. Time. So whatever, ten eleven years old, whatever. There was a move list. Of every move every character yeah, yeah. had and you every fatality. But it was just a sheet of paper. And this fucking bar slash uh, billiards place had like a bunch of the move lists for free. So because they had the game in the, in the bar. Yeah. So imagine a little kid going into a bar to get this move list <laughs> for the game. So it's like someone selling that light outside of Drug World if Drug World actually was an actual drugstore. So <laughs> it just reminds me of that. They just sold bricks of cocaine at Drug World. That's all. And, and pumpkin you, lights. I am, <laughs> I am gonna name a, a song or an album Drug World one day because it's, Drug World. it's just <laughs> too fucking I, good to pass I'm on. Holding you the, I'm holding you to that. And, oh, that's oh, fine, I'm in my word. Dude, if Done. there's one thing, if there's one thing you learned of Adam's pick, is that we just got a kick out of, of the fact that a, an yep. establishment was called Drug World. Drug <laughs> World. The one, <laughs> the one yeah. thing I'll, the one thing I'll say to to kind of close that out too, 
I realized after going back and watching all these videos and watching that dad almost, you know, sever his arm with the, the giant knife <laughs> is this is obviously the influence for the Jack Chop um, video. Oh, for sure. I'm sure. I know. Yeah, I know. 100%. I don't know what that is. Like, it, oh, dude, I know I've mentioned it before when we're done go on youtube look up jack chop and it's okay. the guy's talking with a boston accent like jack chop you don't have time to cop a pumpkin kid <laughs> like it's the most cliche boston accent and the guy just carves himself up with what is supposed to be the pumpkin cutter but the jack chop <laughs> okay the jack chop takes out his eye dude like <laughs> trust me okay go watch it it's amazing i gotta check I it will? out that sounds hilarious i gotta check it out Come on, come on, come on. What's the matter? Don't you have any Halloween spirit? No. All right, so my final pick for the season and this episode is, now you got to bear with me. It's something from Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, came out in 1982, written and directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. As of the past few years... Well, I don't want to even say a few years. I'd say almost 10 years. Halloween 3 has had a giant resurgence in love. I've always mm -hmm. liked this one the most, although I've probably said I liked Halloween 2 the most at one point. <laughs> but we're all familiar. <laughs> I know I probably said I liked that one the most, but I really we do like Halloween We also covered 3. Halloween 3 over on Patreon, so go check yes. that out. We went check super that out. in depth. Yeah. We went through the entire series. What, we got one more, two more movies left? Two more. Um, we're all familiar with the trio of masks that are adored by most, and rightfully so. The witch mask, the jack-o'-lantern mask, and the skeleton mask, but I'm not talking about those. I'm here to talk about that cold and calculated title sequence jam-packed with enough atmosphere to fill a cemetery. We get this opening sequence that is basically synced with the incredible score, and it's my one of my favorite movie scores of all time. It's great. From John Carpenter and Alan Howarth. The lines methodically exact filling up the screens are such a great tone setter for this film. Cold and ominous are the two words that keep coming to mind when I think and watch this opening. The pixelation of the screen, the different cuts of the lines, it's almost like a video game. We finally get a staggering, flickering, computer-generated jack-o'-lantern, and it's fucking terrifying. Uh, in my opinion, this pixelated jack-o'-lantern is just as iconic as the three masks, if not more. Best part is it's not even a physical jack o' lantern. Um, <laughs> I was like trying to find something that I was like I, I want to do. Like I know both of my picks are probably a little more on the obscure side. Not that Halloween three is anything obscure about it, but nah, not anymore. <laughs> right, but I don't think anybody would have really thought about that. I mean, I'm sure there are people, but that pixelated skip pumpkin to me is is cooler than the three masks. Yeah, in my opinion, I, I think it's iconic for sure, because I'm pretty sure I've seen the actual jack-o'-lantern itself, maybe not in the style of being pixelated, like on pins and T-shirts. So it has it has become a little more popular over the yeah, years. For sure. Maybe not maybe not as popular as the three masks for obvious reasons, because you can wear the actual right. like you can wear them and you can market those masks a little easier on shirts. But I, I totally agree, dude. Like, and I'm pretty sure in our Patreon episode we talked a little more in depth about Probably, the I don't actual, even remember <laughs> the actual like the actual jack o' lantern. But yeah, yeah, dude. It's it's I, I would agree it's iconic and probably to me after the original one, which we talked about the original jack o' lantern from Halloween 1978. In that intro, I would think this is probably the second most iconic in the entire franchise maybe even more so than the second one which breaks apart and turns into a skeleton there's a skeleton yeah. inside the pumpkin yeah. inside the jack-o'-lantern but i would say this one's probably and this is the last time one of the films opened up with a jack-o'-lantern as mm -hmm. a kind of the main centerpiece so that tells you something too because part four didn't even though part four has that phenomenal you know farm opening sequence that we i'm sure we also gushed about when we covered halloween 4 but this is the last time they used the jack-o'-lantern in the halloween franchise as the centerpiece besides the new movies that are mimicking the original you know they're literally copying the original uh first two films so it is, yeah. it is that is a good pick and I, and I would say it's it's just as iconic as the original the original jack-o'-lantern so and i 
I can't stress enough how this opening is such a tone setter for that movie. Yeah. Like, it's just like this digitized fucking nightmare. And it, I don't know. It's just, it's scary. You know, like just seeing that. Cause it's, what's that? I said, are you getting choked up talking about it? No. <laughs> he, he's, Dave's getting emotional talking about the jack-o'-lantern. From I'm Halloween sad. <laughs> he's sad. I do want to say it does look like it was made on like an Atari or something like that. Yeah, it's, or some, <laughs> just it some old, like. I mean, obviously it was made on some old ass computer probably. Yeah. And they definitely probably had to like, because I remember like taking computer classes in like elementary school. Like you had yeah. to put a whole bunch of fucking commands in to get a yeah. thing, like to get the computer to draw something. So that's probably yeah. what the fuck it was. And and I, you know what I always loved about it? How the music, there's like that. Doo, oh yeah, doo, it goes right doo, to it. Like it's synced and you right can in with it. See it with the with the eerie John Carpenter score. You could see the actual pumpkin, the outline of it being made. And at first, you don't know it's a jack o' lantern. Like you're looking at it, like, what the fuck is this? When you're seeing the movie for the first right. time, right? But eventually, I love how it ends with the blinking jack o' lantern, which. In reality, what that is is the blinking jack o' lantern from the commercial, from the Happy Happy Halloween, because yeah. that's what yeah. that's yeah, what yeah. the kids are looking at. So it goes to show you that that's kind of going to be the main, you know, the main thing that people are looking at when they their brains explode and turn to mush and fucking insects <laughs> come out of their eye, eye yeah. sockets and shit like <laughs> that. So definitely a good one. What do you what do you think of this jack o' lantern, Adam? So. It falls in line with the rest. Like Halloween three to me, again it, to everybody, it's its own thing, but it's not. But it is. And I remember being a little kid in my local video store, not nearly enough old enough to see any of the movies at that point. Yeah. I mean, what year was it released? Eighty three. Eighty three. Eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I couldn't have been more than like. I mean, I was born in eighty one, so. Yeah, I I was still very young, and I was looking yeah. at the box because the box had. Yeah, I knew Michael Myers was a thing, yeah. but the box had you know the the shadows of the kids, the you know the witch hat and everything, and I'm like, oh, this is different. Yeah, and I remember some older kid came up to me. They're like, yeah, that one's stupid, Michael Myers, isn't it? You don't need to watch that one. Yeah, so that was like my first impression How of it. How wrong and, he was. <laughs> and right 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 and <laughs> and not being the biggest fan of the halloween series like it's just it's just not part of my growing up yeah but to see but eventually seeing this one probably sometime in my mid 20s mm -hmm. and to see it catch steam is awesome to see the the you know the skeleton the witch and the pumpkin head catch you know catch like deserved just getting love at basically. this point yeah, right it's getting love but not like it did before but the uh before. The, the intro to this like it just doesn't you can't fit the tone of a movie better than the intro for I it completely um, agree agree and i have dave if i can find it I literally have a screen printed poster of this that I took off the record of off the wall of a record store in Portland, Maine. If I can find it, you can have it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Actually, I have I, a I, Halloween three poster behind me, but it doesn't have the pumpkin that we're talking about in it. <laughs> that's a that's a creative pick. Like I'll give Dave credit yeah. here because I knew nothing about the Burroughs creepy old men. Thing. <laughs> there you <And> go. <laughs> to dial it back to this, like that is pretty that is pretty iconic as far as just having effect to it for sure. Yeah, so yeah. I, it's a good, I, it, it definitely it starts the movie off. It it, it takes oh, this, you in the right yeah. kind of right direction, you know. Like it's, it's right. it sums up the movie in a few a minute or two, like just that intro. Mm -hmm. Totally does. Happy Halloween. The Grand Pumpkin! You are real! That's right, Milhouse. Your childlike belief has brought me to life. I knew you'd come. I even baked you a loaf of homemade pumpkin bread. Oh, how delightful. Bread made especially for pumpkins. Hmm. Mm hmm. Actually, it's made from pumpkins. What? So my last pick is the Great Pumpkin as a concept. Now, 
When I say very as a con- yeah, very meta. Now, when I say as a concept, that's because, and, and I'm not going to go into the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown or it's the Great Pumpkin. Is it? Is it? It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to go into that too much because I, I actually do want to cover that on the show fairly soon. Um, but what I always liked was Linus believed in the Great Pumpkin like a kid would Santa Claus. And in this Halloween special, he waits in the pumpkin patch for the Great Pumpkin. And the Great Pumpkin never arrives. And when you think of the Great Pumpkin, you think of a giant pumpkin. That's what you think of, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, I would say so. That's kind of... And Linus never... He never describes to my recollection what the great pumpkin looks like in his mind or what he thinks it looks like all the kids kind of brush him off in the episode and just talk shit to him that the great pumpkin doesn't exist and he's a fucking idiot for waiting in the pumpkin patch i'm not even joking that's tough crowd dude like lucy is an like they're all assholes to him in this episode they're like linus you're an idiot for waiting in the pumpkin patch for the great pumpkin and you feel really bad for him there's also this one shot really quick where you see linus cold with his blanket and you feel really bad because all he wants is to see the great pumpkin but yes to kind of jump off of that because i don't want to focus too much on the actual special itself What I love about The Great Pumpkin is there's been so many different versions of The Great Pumpkin in a kind of horrific sense and in a spooky – because when you think about it, this giant pumpkin that emerges in a pumpkin patch – would be something fucking terrifying when you really when you really think about it. It would not be something it'd be something you run away from, not run and want to give a hug to. Technically, now I have a couple of examples here, and this is why I think it's iconic that there's been parodies of the Great Pumpkin that actually show what the Great Pumpkin looks like. So one of the first references I could, and I recommend all of our listeners to Google these things or, or you know, go on YouTube and, and you'll find everything I'm about to talk about. But one of the first things I remember, and this is a t-shirt that came out years ago. I'll be honest. I don't know who the artist was, uh, but it's a parody of the Great Pumpkin. And on this shirt, you've got this giant jack-o'-lantern with vines and stuff, all the green vines, and all of the Peanuts kids dead around yeah. him it's fucking amazing like that someone that's amazing des- designed this and the great pumpkin is just there looming over all their corpses it's fucking hilarious and i just think that image alone of this giant sinister jack-o'-lantern sums up what the great pumpkin looks like like I, i'm forever tarnished that that's what he looks like now some other examples there's a robot chicken episode. <laughs> great one. Where it's a great one where Linus, he's 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 in the pumpkin patch, and he, you know, obviously he's talking about no one believes him. Oh, no one believes me that the great pumpkin's real. He never comes. He fucking summons in like a satanic ritual by killing a chicken. He summons the great pumpkin. The great pumpkin comes, kills him. And then goes after everyone else in, in, in all the other fucking peanuts. And then it ends with a giant tree. Charlie Brown uses a giant tree to eat and kill the great pumpkin. It's fucking ridiculous. It's robot chicken. What do you expect? Um, but my favorite parody of the great pumpkin and him being a horror character is the um, – <laughs> I, I forget if it's the Great Pumpkin or the the Grand. I think it's the Grand Pumpkin is what they call it. It's the Great. Gra- it's the Grand Pumpkin Millhouse, and it works the same way. Where Millhouse from The Simpsons, you, everyone knows Millhouse. He's a great character. Um, he's waiting for the the Grand Pumpkin because they don't want to get sued. They do that with The Shining, The Shinning on a great <laughs> on a Treehouse of Our episode. But yeah. He's waiting for the uh, the grand pumpkin to show up, and no one believes him. He cries, and this triggers a ginormous jack o' lantern to grow in the pumpkin patch. And what happens is Millhouse accidentally tells the grand pumpkin that they carve 
and and use pumpkins during Halloween. He feeds them pumpkin bread, and it's made of real pumpkin. <laughs> and the grand pumpkin goes around eating. He eats Homer and eats people because he finds out that people use pumpkins and carve them and are killing them. And he cannot believe he can't believe uh. it. He's so <laughs> upset about this because Yo, he's hurt. Yeah, he is hurt. And it's so funny because he always sees Jackal and he's like, oh my God. At one point, I think Homer or one of the characters comes out. Not Homer because Homer's carving pumpkins and he eats Homer. And then he says, good evening, ladies. The grand pumpkin goes, good evening, ladies, and jets off because he's talking to the pumpkins. But there's a scene where one of the characters comes out with pumpkin seeds, with roasted pumpkin seeds. And he's like, you're eating unborn pumpkins? Like he literally says that, the grand pumpkin. It's a, pr- it's a pretty it, funny premise for this. It's fucking amazing it's probably the best parody of the great pumpkin and i think that's what's so iconic about the concept of the great pumpkin that so many people have been able to take this idea and give it a sinister twist and i think that's what's like because the whenever you ask people it's you know it's the great pumpkin or whatever charlie brown that special is iconic i honestly think as people age out and get older, I think it is losing its luster. I feel like I don't see as many people talk about the Great Pumpkin as much as they That's used because, to. Because it's know? not on network TV anymore. Yeah, it's on Apple TV or some yeah, shit now, stupid. Which, which is wild. But people are not – I feel like younger generations, like if you're 19, you're not watching this special anymore. And it's a great it's a great special. I still throw it on every Halloween. It's of 20 course. minutes long. It's fucking great. Um, but – I just always loved this, the concept of the great pumpkin and just how you're able to twist that and make it all morbid. So it's funny you say that anytime, you know, I've seen this countless times as a kid. I haven't watched it recently, but my head in my head, it goes to, doesn't go to anything morbid. It just goes to this grand pumpkin that just kind of appears that stays for like yeah. a little bit and then disappears. That's in my head what the, you know, the great pumpkin is. So yeah. I I would say probably most people would probably think it's like this terrifying thing, but I do think that there are people that probably just think it's this, you know, this royal pumpkin. looking <laughs> pumpkin like, "Oh, let me look like look at this beautiful pumpkin and then it goes yeah. away." That's yeah. what I think. That's what I get when I think about it. Yeah, a royal pumpkin. That's my favorite thing you've said. Yeah, it's yeah. a little. Pu- it's a big pumpkin with a crown on its head. That'd be. Or just like of- with like these beautiful vines and this like shine, this gleam in the night. Yo, like that's that what I get pumpkin. from it. <laughs> yeah, it's a royal pumpkin. I <laughs> think. You gonna, I th- gonna say something, Adam? Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I think out, out of the concept of of the actual special, there's definitely no um, no suspicion that you think the the great pumpkin is going to be anything no you know no. evil you right. know what dave said it's like yeah a royal pumpkin is almost the way a good way to put it you feel yeah. like maybe he's got like the robe like the freddie mercury king robe and he comes <laughs> out of the pumpkin pen. yeah but but great. the concept of making it evil is not only slightly genius but almost in a way kind of obvious because yeah. it's it's it went for so long not being looked at as something that could possibly be not good yeah and, uh, for that to get elaborated spirit. on i yeah <laughs> i know the i know the shirt you're talking about where you see um you know him summoning the great pumpkin at a pentagram and it's such a good way to take it yeah um to to your point about the special though you know it's not talked about as much because it's not just a thing that happens to be on a major network a day yeah. in October. You know, we, the fact that you can go watch it anytime kind of takes the, the fun out of it. Yeah. You know, it's just it, something's always better when it's just on or a song comes on the radio. Sure. You can go play it through Apple music or whatever, but when it just sure. shows up, and I think that hurts it, but also like we just have to go to the, you know, ever humbling idea that we're old you know <laughs> yeah you yeah. are gonna have you can't have are you gonna have the conversation with your nan about you i miss that they don't put a wonderful life on every year <laughs> yeah, anymore no. i don't have a dvd player like yeah yeah for sure like so so i get that you know it it just doesn't show up and it should but in a sick twisted way you know taking something that's almost kind of uh childhood sacred in a way and really just kind of applying the 
the the schlocky horror element to it. It's kind of like almost so obvious, but very rarely done. And when it's done, it's done pretty well. Yeah, and and that's kind yeah. of what I think is just so iconic that the, the the actual great pumpkin can be anything. It can be sinister. It can be a royal right. pumpkin, like Dave said. It can be a you know a spirit. It could be whatever. And I think that's what's like the most iconic about it now. Just kind of in the zeitgeist, just kind of what it is the great pumpkin, you know. And to kind of clo- and to kind of wrap it up here with the great pumpkin. This is obviously where you came. Or I'm guessing, right? This is where you got the name for your brand. Well, um, it wasn't directly <laughs> ripped from Charlie Brown. Yeah. That wasn't the intention. Yeah. I when I remember going back and trying to think of names for it, it was I kind of wanted to come up with something. I, I don't know, for lack of a better term, more mysterious, more vague, yeah. but to where you got the point. And I remember sitting there, I can probably actually find the piece of paper, me sitting there scribbling names out, you know, like, okay, what ha- what's catchy? And then obviously the term, you know, the words great and pumpkin exist yeah. because of that. But then it's like, what do I call it? Like, do I call it a, uh, like a cl- not club? Do I call it yeah. like a mission? What am I calling it? And it's like, okay, it's a project. And then just the, it just rolls off the tongue. And I'm like, it's kind of, too obvious kind of too simple yeah. but it's like you're really not going to get something that sticks as good as that so no, of course of course of course it's rooted in charlie brown just because the term great pumpkin comes from there yeah. and would i and it would it be possible i came up with it let's say that didn't exist maybe because it's you know it just bounces it's it's got good rhythm to it but yeah it's it, it definitely has to lend a hand to it so I'm sure yeah, most people sense. when they when they see it, that's what they think of. They think you. Took, I'm oh, sure they're for, like, this guy lifted it from Charlie Brown. That's probably oh for what sure. They think. Even yeah. even when googling it, like I see like on Instagram, if some if I get like, oh, somebody tagged you in a, a thing, and I'm like, it's obvious they didn't look to, till the full end of the hashtag that they yeah. were not having anything to do with what what I'm doing. It's like, they yeah. just wanted to put the great pumpkin. So yeah, yeah it, it happens. Sure, but I mean, <laughs> hey, if it's accidental exposure, all the better, you know. For sure, that's that's always a good thing. There's nothing wrong with sharing. There's nothing wrong with sharing a name with an iconic pumpkin. So that's <laughs> exactly. It could be worse. All right. So if you each had to pick one pumpkin, jack o' lantern, without picking your own, what would it be, Adam? Out of all of our picks, which which jack o' lantern would you pick? I think I'm going to err on the William S. Burroughs thing because it's something I knew <laughs> absolutely nothing about. And now I'm actually kind of prompted to go read because when when I went up and looked up the picture after you said it and there's this whole thing like William S. Burroughs and his pumpkin written by so on and so forth. So it's like there's obviously deeper uh, lore to the thing, you know, and you kind of summed it up pretty good just explaining it. But I'm like, wow, like this is this is really off and weird and i kind of like that stuff so uh, for me to be completely out of the know on something and be introduced to it where i'm kind of like eh, let me check this out i have to give it to dave's pick because awesome. that, that's pretty weird <laughs> i like it love it what, what about you dave what 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 pumpkin uh, light. Pumpkin light. <laughs> pumpkin light pumpkin light <laughs> it's you know it's funny you... i'm going with the pumpkin light too so oh. <laughs> there you go <laughs> Dude, <laughs> what so say, you said you you mentioned you knew it from you know your childhood did you dave or like is this something totally new to you the pumpkin light no i had one okay you did have one. i right. totally totally remember it. yeah absolutely um, yeah yeah it's just something that you know i had forgotten about it when you post that out that's when i was like oh shit i forgot about this <laughs> i mean so, yeah and to me light. To me, it felt kind of like a throwaway, a throwaway pick because I'm like, I literally couldn't think of something because going no, from you know the headless pick. horseman to this, yeah, and I'm like, all right, pick. it's kind of got almost a a more, I, at least I feel a more local kind of definitely uh, uh, history or uh, you know nostalgia to it. But I'm glad it, you know, I'm glad it went over. Listen, man, the pumpkin light wins solely. On drug world being a thing now. Yep. So, <laughs> drug world is what sold it. There you go. I gotta 
I got to go find which one of the videos is. I'll go on here after we're done and go through the YouTube videos again. But just finishing those and seeing the ridiculous names, yeah. people name pharmacies, like, why? Drug world, man. So. Yep. Life's all about drug world now. Haunted hangover. We're just going to be all about drug world now. That's all. That's all, all we're just going to change. <laughs> we're just going to change the podcast name to drug world. Dr- no, well, obviously. <laughs> How do you, what's, what's a drug hangover? What were you going to call it? Haunted overdose? Or? <laughs> Yo, that's uh, haunted over, haunted that's overdose. Amazing. Oh, man. Yo, we're going to have a whole rebrand. Haunted overdose, a.k.a. <laughs> drug world. There you go. Keep an eye, yeah. keep an ear out, listen, an eye and ear out, listeners. Available at Genevieve's, Woolworth, Wall Bombs, King's, Dan Supreme, and Drug World. So that was Iconic Jack-O-Lanterns, part three. Adam. Thank you so much for being on the show once again, sir. <laughs> An absolute pleasure as always. I will be back as long as you want to have me here. Get up to like, you know, Iconic Jack-O-Lanterns Part 12, The Great Pumpkin Project Returns, whatever. <laughs> uh, but yeah, any anytime. Happy to be here. Happy uh, for it to be the kickoff to the best pleasure. part of the year. So Absolutely. thank you both. It, it, every August, you know, the listeners have to look forward. They, they, they look forward to you being on the I show. I love just, it. And just I love it. About it. Wait, wait until we get to uh, iconic jack o' lanterns in space. That's 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 a little uh, <laughs> that's a little a little further down the line. Uh, where can people find you and the Great Pumpkin Project? They can find the Great Pumpkin Project at Instagram at greatpumpkinproject.com. The very sparingly up, ever updated actual website, thegreatpumpkinproject.com. Um, did I say dot com twice? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, the website's where you can go to print your own tags every year. The tags that were made um, physically will be made digitally every year. So you can get 2021's tags to print out, put on your pumpkins at thegreatpumpkinproject.com. All the updates, pictures, submissions, and all that stuff will be at the Instagram. Maybe one day I will get on TikTok. God forbid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is that is that is where you can find all that Amazing. stuff. Um, if you have anything to email, it is I think the Great Pumpkin Project at gmail.com. Yeah, and submit a picture. Put a pumpkin somewhere. Put a jack o' lantern somewhere yeah. exotic. Carve Damn one. Damn right, it Do ain't it. about me. Yeah. Participate, about, you know, participate, people. The only way, the only way it thrives. Get out <laughs> there, sure. carve them, and participate. Put them in, that's it. Put them on more porches, Dave. <laughs> oh, we will. Trust me, we will be doing that. And get Tommy Valley, rally him. <laughs> I'm sure Tommy Valley will be doing a pumpkin one day a year. Uh, one one day a year. We'll be doing it one day a month this October. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy bag of pumpkins. <laughs> Tommy pumpkins. Tommy pumpkins. Uh, and be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Haunted Hangover. Check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash Haunted Hangover 31. And if you can rate and review us, that would be greatly appreciated. And remember, the best cure for a hangover is... More, more booze. Boo. <laughs> you went full drug drug world on that right drug there. world hell world. yeah hell drug yeah world. drug world coming soon whoa, drug, whoa. World. drug world rebrand 2023 fuck yeah drug world